What's up, guys? It's Finn. Um, <laughs> I make videos so intermittently, and I, I think I mentioned this before, but um, it's because I don't have ready internet access using my computer um, at the place where I live, So, um, and the other computer I use doesn't have a webcam on it. Um, so here I am. I'm actually house-sitting for a friend right now, so... Uh, taking advantage of their Wi-Fi and uploading a video. Um, so I am, I'm about 12 days shy. I'm 12 days shy, almost two weeks of being on testosterone for four months. Um, <laughs> I have so much body hair. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, my voice has dropped a lot. My facial hair is starting to come in. Uh, it's very thick on my upper lip. Um, thick and dark. Uh, you can see, like, the outline of it a little bit, but, um, it's still fine. And I can feel hair on the sides, starting, like, right down here. I can feel it on my cheeks. Um, and if I look in the mirror, if I lean in a little bit, I can see hair is starting to sprout up. Um, and it's actually coming in fairly evenly for the most part. Um, it's not weird and patchy. Um, and the same thing goes with my legs. Uh, before I didn't grow a lot of hair on my thighs, uh, but my calves were really hairy. And now my thighs have kind of caught up and it's just like hair all over my legs. <laughs> um, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's actually been hard for me to, like, gauge where I do my injections on my leg because the hair is now so thick and dense that I can't see, um, my previous injection points, whereas I used to be able to, like, a couple weeks ago, and now I can't. <laughs> so, um, pretty stoked with all the hair that's coming in. Um, I... I'm feeling pretty good about my vocal changes. Um, singing is starting to get kind of crazy for me because my center of pitch is changing. Um, obviously, for the most part, I'm reading in bass clef because I'm a baritone at this point. Um, but I have a Christmas gig um, for which I sing tenor. So not all tenor lines are written in treble clef, um, especially for, like, traditional hymns, they're still in bass clef. Um, but I've been having issues jumping back and forth reading tenor and bass clef. And it's really, I was, I was telling my, one of my directors about this tonight. It's actually really pushed me, um, in my musicianship to be a better reader and a better, um, musician to, to have that challenge of, like, consistently going back and forth and reading in both clefs. And it's really hard to, like, if you know music at all, if you don't, feel free to tune this out. But, um, like, you'll read treble clef, and it'll be a D on the line, and then you'll look down, and you'll start reading it as if it's treble clef still, but it's it's totally different. Um, it's, I, I can't explain it. It's weird. It's totally weird. It's a mind fuck, actually. Like... Prior, excuse me, prior to testosterone, um, <laughs> I was really fucking good at sight reading. And I'm still really good at it, but before T, I had a center of pitch um, that had been established for several years. And so it was, I had really good relative pitch within my FOC, within um, what I was able to do and the part that I usually sang. And now that I'm singing baritone, it's harder for me to find my center, and it's hard for me to exercise my relative pitch because I'm, for the most part, I I read bass clef fluently, but it, I have no concept yet of how to pick out, you know, a C um, reading the music. Like, I can read a piece of music and see a C notated, but I can't figure it out where it is in my head. It's all muddled. And I sound like a 15-year-old boy when I sight read because 
my voice cracks. Sometimes I think it's higher than it really is, especially if I'm reading a tenor line that's written in bass clef. Um, I'm re I read it as if it's treble clef, so I'm thinking, okay, tenor is written in treble clef, but it's sung an octave lower than it's written, and oh my god. Oh my god, it drives me to drink. Um, <laughs> So that's been crazy, and it's actually really challenged me in my transition. One of the biggest challenges, I think, has actually been reading music. Um, also, I'm finding that people don't believe me <laughs> when I tell them that my voice is changing. Um, they, they believe it because they can hear that my voice is dropping, but the feelings that, that I get in, in my throat and in my head and even in my sinuses sometimes. Um, my voice feels like it resonates in a different spot every week. Like right now it's very high and in the back of my throat and my soft palate is raised and, and I can literally feel it vibrating in my chest. Um, and right now like I'm speaking in the upper half of my speaking voice and I usually try to do that because it's easier on your vocal folds. Um, but if I'm just being lazy, I'll, I'll just drop it down. Um, so you can't really treat a trans voice like a cis voice. Um, I know that people like to use the analogy that it's like going through puberty all over again. Um, and to a certain extent it is, like what I was just saying about how your center of pitch changes and your voice changes and your voice cracks, that aspect is very much um, akin to a young boy going through puberty. But there's also a different aspect of it that I don't think um, cis people necessarily understand. Um, as trans people, we want to be validated and we want to know that our changes are showing up and to tell a trans person, um, well, your voice hasn't changed that much or your voice isn't lower than mine or whatever people say, I've, those are just some things that I've been told, is really invalidating. Um, and when I can feel that there are parts of me that are changing, it's not cool for other people to tell me that something is not changing when it very clearly is. So that's been something that I've struggled with a lot lately is just getting people on board and realizing that things are actually starting to happen very quickly. Um, granted, my doctor, by her own admission, put me on a very high dose of testosterone. I take half a milliliter. <laughs> I take half a milliliter every week. Um, and I know that some guys by this point have cycled out to every other week, but because I do it every week, um, I attribute my fast changes to um, the intensity of my dose and how frequently I inject. Um, so I am now feeling a lot of the psychological effects of um, elevated testosterone. Um, I'm starting to think in much more of a male way um, or what we stereotypically corporately understand as a male pattern of thought. And um, it's really helped. Um, I've had a lot of really bad mood swings lately. Um, and I actually had someone that I respect very much call me out on that. Actually, I've had a few people call me out on it. And it's something that I've started working a lot on. I, I feel like puberty is, is, is crazy. <laughs> um, it's even more crazy when you're in your mid-20s than when you're in your teens, I think. Um, because you act out in very much the same way as a teenager would. And I've gone through these distinct patches of immaturity and selfishness that I think a lot of teenagers go through um, and feeling like no one understands what's going on with you and you know all of that stuff that is attributed to normal 
rite of passage adolescence is very much what I'm going through right now. And so I've kind of been like really closed off and I've kind of been an asshole. Um, and I feel really bad about that. So in the last week, I've really been working on reversing that pattern of behavior and um, coming into my own more as the man I would like to be. And I'm sure that other people appreciate that. <laughs> so um, if you've been affected by my douchebaggery, I apologize. Um, family stuff is awesome. I know that this is kind of stupid, but I checked on my brother's Facebook um, and he had me listed as his brother and actually called me bro uh, back in the day before I started transitioning. Um, I would call him bro and he would call me sis and that was kind of our thing. And now he calls me bro, so that's pretty cool to me. And um, all my, my aunts um, and uncles on my biological father's side all regard me as a nephew and, um, you know, so it's really cool. Really, really cool to have such incredible family support. Um, I called my parents on Saturday, I think it was, or no, it was on Friday after the wedding, um, to talk about stuff and I told my dad that I was starting to shave and how much it sucks. <laughs> Shaving is not as fun as I thought it would be before I started testosterone. Um, and he was like, yeah, some people do it before they get in the shower and some people do it after and everyone has their own little way. And so we totally bonded over shaving, which was awesome. Um, and I talked to my mom a little bit, but I didn't talk to her about trans stuff, I don't think. Although I called her to tell her about the wedding and like this spiritual epiphany that I had following the wedding that um, is actually what I came here to make a video about. And I'm already at 12 minutes. Um, but I'm going to keep pushing through and you're going to keep watching because I'm awesome. Um, I've decided to, I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, but I've decided to uh, reaffirm my faith. Um, as a Christian, I would like to um, become a member of the Anglican Church um, as an Episcopalian. Um, I grew up Presbyterian, which is like Diet Lutheran. Diet Lutheran is like no carb Catholic, so I guess Episcopalian is like, I don't know like the dirty martini of post-reformation denominations. I don't know. I used to be a theology major and I used to have like all my ways that I would classify the denominations like this. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I've done a lot of research um, on the Anglican church and they are actually very open and accepting of um, all flavors of GLBT people, um, especially trans people, uh, which I found very encouraging. So. Um, if you're a spiritual, religious, Christian, GLBT person who kind of wants to get back in touch, um, with their spiritual side again, I would highly recommend that you check out, um, the Anglican Church. Uh, go to an Episcopal service. It's especially cool if you're like me and you like a lot of structure in your worship. Um, I'm definitely very into liturgy. So, um, yeah. A lot of cool things going on lately. There are a lot of things that kind of really need to happen in the next couple weeks and a lot of things that um, I'm really excited about. I'm really excited to spend the holidays with my best friend, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas probably. Um, really excited to uh, get back to school. Um, I'm too smart to be doing nothing with this giant brain I have. So, and I'm really humble. Um, so a lot of good things on the horizon, but I have to get going, um, with all these things that I have to do, uh, and it's time to be proactive. And I think, uh, the last couple weeks have been really good, um, a really good time for me to prioritize and figure out kind of what I want my next step in life to be. 
um, I'm still very young, which um, has been brought up to me, I started feeling really old and I started acting really old and crotchety. Um, and I have a lot of life left in me, so it's time to, time to live the dream. So, um, transition's going really well. Um, I hope you're all doing wonderfully. Uh, I hope your holidays are beautiful, no matter how you celebrate them. Um, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.